We just loaded up on, I think, close to like a couple dozen lobsters. We have plenty of lobsters in conch, and we're going to have a fresh lunch, and we're going to a deserted island to do a cook with our catch. Good morning, what's happening everyone? I hope you all are doing well. If you're new to this channel, my name is Darcizzle, and you're watching Darcizzle Offshore. And in today's video, we are here in Old Bahama Bay, located in West End Bahamas. And I just walked out of my uh, hotel room, has slash resort, and we are headed over to the water. I'm fishing with Captain Kenneth today. And actually, we're gonna probably be doing some diving and snorkeling, maybe some fishing, but they are picking us up right here on the beach, 100 feet away from our resort here. This is pretty sweet. So this is how our day is gonna get started, and I know it's only gonna get better. is we are going to be diving for lobster and conch today and I'm with Captain Kenny of uh, West End Water Sports out of Old Bahama Bay Resort and today we have two different methods of what we're going to be using in order to catch these lobsters here and there's this fine lobster you would see in Florida where I go lobstering and also we're just going to be picking up some conch too so hopefully we find a bunch but the two methods of catching the lobster starting with this gap you use a short little gap and you would actually like when they're in the rocks or walking around in the grass, you're going to try and hook them with this hook underneath the soft shell of their body and just grab them like that. Like, just, I don't know, just use the gap and pull them up. And then you have a Hawaiian sling here. That's the next method to use it. I've never used a Hawaiian sling. Maybe I'll eventually use it today. But you see, we've got our, uh, I don't even know what this is called, this piece of it. And then you, got, you attach this to the bottom and then that's how you would uh, be able to push the sling and have this shoot out the barb and catch it that way. So we're going to see how it goes today. I think I'll be able to get on a couple. We're in seven to eight feet of water right now, so that's perfect snorkeling conditions. So now it's time to get in the water and get some lobster and conch. We just loaded up on, I think, close to like a couple dozen lobsters, thanks to Chris and I. But Chris did most of the work there. But we have plenty of lobsters in conch, and we're going to have a fresh lunch, and we're going to a deserted island to do a cook with our catch. So we break them out. Just hit right there, put a hole in her, and you see the little white meat underneath there? Yep. Just grab the knife underneath the white meat. Check one jaw. Wow. It comes right out. It comes right out. Wow. Everybody so wants you to try. You have to eat it. I have to eat that? Yeah, what you, is have, that? you have to no. eat it. No. What is that? Eat the face on so she can see it. 
Is that good? That's good. Oh man. So I gotta you get one too? Yeah, you have to eat one. Oh man, alright. Bohemian Viagra. Uh, Bohemian Viagra. Oh my gosh. Alright guys. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna try it. Here we go. It's pretty good. It's, yeah, it's like a gummy bar fair, right? Exactly. Not a lot of taste to it, but it's not bad. It's pretty good. Chewy. <laughs> Very chewy. Cool. Cut the pot off. Get it back to white. Yep. Take all off this jacket. That's how we clean it up. And that's the part that would need for this, conch salad. Ah, uh, the white part. Got this. it. So you got a professional white. Wow. Is that good? Yep. Sweet. Let's grab it. Okay. And check it underneath. Let's keep checking. Alright. That should be good? Alright. Okay. Take him out. There you go. Cool. I kind of did it with help. <laughs> nice. Put this down. And then, uh, yeah, I guess that these are their eyeballs, like you guys saw before. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's what they see with. And then that's their actual claw that they use to walk along the bottom. That's pretty neat. And now he's got to take the guts out. This is all the guts. So I'm going to let him finish that process. <laughs> now it's time for the cook portion. We're here on the deserted island, and this is called Sandy Key. Um, it's a pretty cool location. And Chris is over there still working on conch. I, got to, I was able to go ahead and uh, clean one myself. And this cool big lobster we've got to eat, so we gotta clean both. We gotta clean this lobster. But I just wanted to say I didn't realize like how gorgeous conch were when they're alive, especially the inside the shell. Like just look at those colors, amazing, really cool. And then all the other conch have different shades, pink and orange and yellow. And back in the United States, you're not allowed to keep conch; it's illegal. So we can't even like pick them off, pick them up off the seafloor or anything like that. Lobster, I catch these all the time, but these I never get to ever handle. So it's really cool to see this in person and they're delicious so we take out the guts we use a piece of the whip yep break that off i know that trick <laughs> <laughs> get it up and now pull it out now we gotta go put them in the pot get them ready you can them the candy yeah let candy get them ready for you guys awesome I will. No. And this one is a female, guys. Yeah, that's a female. I know it's a female because of these, uh, th she has these underneath these claws. claws. Yeah, she's got these little claws to hold her eggs here. And a male would not have that. All right, gonna give them to Kenny. Oh, look, check out the stingrays in here. All right, check out these waves, guys. They're super cool. It's really in the flats here. If you've never done this before, I recommend that you try it. You can feed them and pet them. They come right up to you. This guy was just feeding for a long time. I think he's full now. He came when you left. But there's a bunch of other ones on the flats here. We just threw a bunch of basically anything, any type of fish or bait they'll eat. Um, and they kind of just roll, they kind of just swim by and scoop it up underneath and eat it on the sand. So they're really cool and uh, you can pet them too. So it's pretty neat. Let's see if we can get them again. Just delivered the last lobster to Kenny, Kenneth over here. And he's already, look what he's got set up over here on the island. It's amazing. We got our conch salad and uh, he's already cut up all the veggies and if we want to add the hot stuff to it the hot peppers we'll do that later but i don't like hot stuff oh there we go That's some ghost pepper ghost pepper Woo! that's gonna be hot but let's just see what he just split that uh filet right open just like that and i think we're just gonna go ahead and stick it on our grill we brought with us so we are all set ready to go ready to have a grill out on a deserted island for lunch that is some fresh lobster that one too crazy oh crazy check it out guys delicious conch salad fresh super super fresh this is super tender conch thanks to kenny for making us this delicious conch salad let me go ahead and taste it i'm sure it's delicious i had some the other day it's so good here that is awesome really awesome i don't like hot stuff so no ghost pepper for me but it is so good guys wow all right guys unfortunately we need to leave the island we had part of our lunch we had our conch salad but we need to eat our lobster which is almost done on the grill but we have this nasty storm headed this way the wind is picking up we're on a little flats a little flats boat here so we need to get back to dry land to mainland and then we'll finish our lunch there so that's just part of the weather and how 
how it goes down here. Gotta go. Wait. Do when we get back. Look at that lobster, guys. I think I'm gonna wait. That thing looks gorgeous. So you can go feed it back to the place. You gotta go. epic day guys I have never done anything like that just totally amazing I, that was an epic catch and cook I don't know <laughs> catch and cook I don't know how I, how any other way you would do it that's just amazing that's top of the line so you know and once again we're following our dreams and hopefully inspiring you guys to do the same and come down here to Old Bahama Bay Resort and check out and go with West End Water Sports and Captain Kenneth and he will put you on the lobster and you'll have an epic day out there so T truly, truly amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I'm sorry our, our cook portion kind of got cut short because of the the, the, uh, the rain and stuff, but now it's totally clear. That's just part of, you know, living in the Bahamas down here. So I'll go ahead and link the information and the ingredients and stuff we use down in the description below. I'll also link Old Bahama Bay Resort there. Check them out, located in West End Bahamas. And until our next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching. What's up everyone, Dar Sizzle and Puddin coming at you from our home right here in South Florida and we are a fishing couple and in today's video we are getting ready and gearing up for the very exciting 2021 Florida spiny lobster season and let's just get this right out of the way right now as we all know Florida spiny lobster are way better tasting than the Northeast Maine lobster. Go ahead and drop a comment down below if you agree or go ahead and share your thoughts down below, but we all know Florida lobster are the best. Way better. <laughs> In this video, we wanted to give you all the information that you need ahead of time before you go out there and catch lobster. So as you guys know, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida and started going on the water at age of three with my father, but particularly grew up lobstering. That's what we did as a family tradition. So I have many years of experience and a lot of great memories with my father lobstering out of the homestead area. So we're gonna show you exactly how to go out there and catch your own lobster and a new efficient way on how to clean lobster tails and get approximately 10 more, 10% 10 more meat out of your lobster meat than traditional cleaning methods. And then in the cooking with pudding portion of the video, I'm gonna show you about four different ways to cook these lobsters every single way better than the next. Now for us, lobster season starts tomorrow. I'm not sure when you guys are watching this, but of course check the regulations in your area. But the Florida mini season for recreational lobster people, it starts tomorrow for us and it's a two day mini season, okay? And in Monroe County, which is the Keys where a lot of people go, you're allowed to keep, keep six per person, right Dar Sizzle? Per day. Right, and the rest of Florida is 12. Now the regular season, which the commercial guys can go and everything else, it really opens up is uh, what, August 6th every year, okay? So you can go the next two days or you can go from August 6th until like March sometime. March. But again, of course, check the regs in your area. Yes, and regular season is six per person as well. Yes. Now we are gonna finish getting packaged up. We're gonna get our snorkel gear ready, our tickle sticks, our measuring device, our nets, everything we need, and we'll see you on the water next. We are in my home waters. This is where I grew up. It's a very real like it's just shocking to be here again without my family. But you know what? I'm gonna make them all proud right now. Jump in the water and get some lobsters. They already caught some next to us. Let's go. All right, guys. So we're lobstering, and uh, as the driver, if you want any specific spots, you got to cover ground. And so we're dragging them behind the boat, just in neutral, so behind some ropes, which is pretty common lobster technique and then when they see a lobster they drop off and they, and they catch it and bring it to the boat and then we keep going and that's how you cover some ground and look for structure and rocks and whatever else they're trying to do so just get started uh, waiting for that first lobster Thank you. 
getting out a huge hole. Oh my god. Get it, get it, take it. All right, nice job, Sizzle. And then when our Sizzle gets the uh, lobster in the boat, I just double double check on measuring it. Uh, and you can see here with this little measuring device, you put it between the eyes, and as long as it's uh, this top portion of the shell is smaller than your gauge, then you're all set. I think I want to swim this area. Okay. And check it out. What? I want to swim this area to check it out. Okay. Y'all, I just got out of the water. I've been in the water a solid two hours looking for lobsters, and so far we uh, we have three out of four. Three out of four. <laughs> I had to throw one back, which is not bad. Uh, and they're kind of sitting in the grass today, which is really weird. You usually find them in the structures. Look it up. They're in the video. <laughs> so pretty cool um, and pretty neat to find them in the grass like that. And I think I have a little bit of my dad's luck on my side today, but. Again, just really cool to be back here in the waters I grew up. This is where I was three years old, these exact waters right here. So pretty cool to come back here, yearly tradition, and I'm just taking a little bit of a break, jump back in the water. We gotta get more bugs on the boat because we got three in here. my dad and as you know my dad has since passed but he was definitely with us on the water today we caught a total of eight keeper lobster and as you saw me doing underwater you know simple it's simple here catching our Florida spiny lobster since they don't have claws and all you use is this fancy tickle stick they don't like this metal touching their tail so you just tap them out of holes and and uh, basically they just walk forward and then you take your net but the key to the success with this net is that you actually put it behind their tail and then then you lay it back down on top of them because they flip backwards and that's pretty simple that's how that's the gist of it that's how you catch them some of them were laying in the grass and all I got to do is just scoop them up but um, right now we got them in our live well and they're just chilling hanging out but would have been nice to get a limit but you know what at the same time we got a decent awesome dinner for all three of us so no complaints here well, actually, Darcy got her limit, and I can't see the damn things. And Fra I don't think Frank's over very mean either. <laughs> when they're in the grass, I can't the, spot them. Darcy. Gang. <laughs> yeah, she's missing a lot, which was her family, the kids. Uh, yeah, she sees them like an eagle. I gotta see them in, uh, if they're under something where this should be. I see them, but uh... yeah. And I was also using this awesome weight belt 
to uh, help me get me down in the water, especially when I'm trying to stay down there and I'm trying to actually capture a lobster. I start to float back up to the top. So with these little bit of weights on, I got five pounds of weight on it. It helps me stay on the bottom. Yeah. So. Y'all know I sink like a stone because I'm all muscle. <laughs> I just keep floating right, right back up. Of course, Pete. No, Frank's my man. All right, great segment. And guys, I have to remind you, we have like four or five of these lobster videos over the last decade with Darcy's family and dad, you know, uh, rest his soul, and, and Megan, of course, who was in that uh, car accident you guys all know about, and, and Connor, who's in the Marines. We have a ton of videos, you wanna Google them up. We'll put some links uh, down below. But uh, that reminds us, we need to give you guys an update on Megan. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about it, which I highly appreciate. Thank you for thinking and praying about Megan up to this very day. Uh, but Megan is slowly but surely improving. She is still in a wheelchair and she is posting on social media. Uh, so I'll link her information down below if you're interested in checking her out. But uh, uh, recently a couple of my sisters went and saw her and she's becoming more and more like herself, speaking more and more like herself. But she just still has a long road ahead. Once again, still in a wheelchair, still learning to walk again. She can stand and walk, take a few steps, of course, supported by somebody else. Um, but of course, the goal is to walk again. And she just needs to put a little more muscle on her bones because um, she is a little thin right now. But of course, you know, it's a miracle Megan's alive. And it's just sad to see her struggle and also sad to see these older videos with her, you know, when she was, you know, in her prime. And now Megan is slowly coming back. So just keep praying for her. Two years is the mark after the accident of to where Megan should be. And we're approaching one year right now. The accident was October 14th. So check out those, all, those recent pictures of Megan. And uh, yeah, back to it. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get right back to Darcy cleaning the lobster and his new method would probably, even you veterans have never seen before, where she's gonna show you how to get about 10% more yield out of those lobsters that you've hard work uh, to go get from underneath the sea. We are back at the house and it's another glorious day here in South Florida. We were whipped yesterday. We got up at 3 a.m. and we had over a 12 hour work day. But you know what? Well worth it for these delicious lobster. So we're gonna just dive right into this. I'm gonna be showing you two different methods on how to clean Florida spiny lobster, also known as Caribbean lobster or even crawfish or crayfish, however the heck you wanna say it. I wanna show you really quick too, the difference between a male and a female lobster. And uh, right here in the tail section, what you eat, this is a female. This is how she carries her egg sacs. These little uh, clasper things hold the eggs right here in her tail. And of course, you're not allowed to keep females with bearing eggs. This is a male. A male doesn't have those little claspers. So that's the difference between the two. Pretty cool. We would always check that when we get home growing up to see how many girls and boy lobsters we caught. All right, so I'm gonna show you the two different methods, like I said, and one is gonna give us about 10% more yield on these. And of course you can use gloves. I'm gonna be hardcore today and not use gloves. But so the first one, which is a traditional way of cleaning a lobster, how most people do it down here in Florida, is you hold onto the carapace, hold onto the tail, and you just basically turn, pull, and twist at the same time to rip that open. I just gotta be careful with all these points. Just like so. And there you go. You got your delicious piece of lobster right there. Pretty simple. And you can see there's a little bit of meat in there, but if you got a lot of lobsters to do, that's no big deal. You just wanna bang it out and get done with it quickly. Last thing you gotta do with cleaning the lobster tail, and of course, Brian will prep it in the house for us, but you go through the anal opening right here, take a piece of the antenna, which I already have broken off, and the spines are reversed here. So what you wanna do is go through there. Well, actually the barbs are reversed. Give it a twist and then pull out the intestinal tract, the lobster poop tract, all that nasty stuff you don't wanna eat. And that's gonna go in our bucket here. And don't worry, of course, you can eat these knuckles here and eat the inside the head and all that great stuff. You can even eat the legs, you can cook those up. There's not a whole lot of meat and that's not the biggest lobster in the world. So we're not gonna do that today, but this is not going to waste. I'm gonna, this is gonna be the best stone crab trap bait ever in the world. So I am gonna keep these bad boys and use them in my stone crab traps in a couple days. Brian's shaking his head in a couple months. Brian doesn't like that idea. <laughs> Sorry about the helicopter. Okay, next step here, I'm gonna show you a different method. And you see we got a good amount of meat there, but there was still some meat in the head. So what we're gonna do here is I'm taking my fillet knife and there's a little tab between the last leg here. So what you wanna do is take your knife and I'm using my seven inch knife today. And you see how my knife just inserted right through there? Give it a good push and cut right through there. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Go right between the carapace and get it 
your knife exposed to the back section, there's a little tab right there on the last leg that you want to break, just like that. Now, hold your tail down and lift gently on the top of the carapace and separate it, just like so. You see that? You see all the internals and the guts and all that good stuff? Turn your lobster around and there's a membrane right here that's connecting the tail to the rest of the body. So you can rip this with your fingers or with your knife, whatever works for you. I'll just do it with my knife to show you where that membrane is. Right there. It's not a very, it's a very thin membrane. You do that, hold on to your lobster tail and pull. Now we got about 10% more yield on that lobster tail. You see how much more meat is hanging out of there? Just pull out these internal guts. I'll show you the difference here in just a second. You can see right here that we got a decent amount more meat off that, that lobster. You see on the top part, we got all that delicious head meat. And here it was wasted inside the carapace. So, and I'll show you again the difference of doing it like so. So pretty cool. Same exact simple steps, except you just got to break it and take a little more time to separate the two pieces of the carapace. And you can get that much more meat out of your lobster. So pretty cool actually just learned that recently and you can definitely see the difference. I mean, that's that's a difference, good difference of meat there. So just take your time with it and you'll you know, get as much as yield as possible out of that lobster. All right, so that is how you clean a Florida spiny lobster. And I'm gonna finish up the rest of these bad boys and then meet you in the house for the cooking with put in portion of this video. And if you guys are interested in the knives I just used, I'm gonna link all that information down in the description below. You can save 15% on your purchase plus free shipping. Doesn't get much better than that. Nice job, guys. So clean those lobster tails. And welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with Puddin' Lobster Preview Edition. All right. Now, one thing we forgot to mention in the earlier parts of this video is where do you find the lobsters, right? It, that's always the point when you're fishing, right? Where are the fish? Where are the, where are the crabs? Where are the lobsters, all right? Now, if you go out on mini season or the first day of regular season, you're gonna see the boats, <laughs> all right? Just hike on over there and, and start snorkeling, okay? Don't uh, don't get anyone's way, of course, and there's gonna be a lot of people, so just have a little uh, attitude of gratitude, a little patience, and you'll be fine, okay? But you can snorkel for them. If you have scuba tanks, you can go even deeper, all right, of course, and you can use one of those uh, air lung thingamajiggies, a diving bell, I don't even know what they call it right now, but Darcy did it once, it was totally awesome, all right? So you're gonna see the boats, all right? But this is something you're gonna to wanna to pre-fish for or pre-dive for. So you're gonna go out there a little bit before regular season and go hit those shallow spots and, and just see where the lobsters are. This is a great thing for the family. Second only, or maybe even better than scalloping, okay? You can get the family out there. So a lot of people think you have to go to the Keys. You do not. We've caught a lot of lobsters here in Palm Beach County. You can basically catch them, and maybe you can go further, I don't know, I'm just saying you can catch them from Stewart, Martin County, all the way around the Keys, of course, down to Key West. So we've caught them in Boynton. We've caught them in Palm Beach. You catch them in Hillsborough. You catch them in Fort Lauderdale. All these spots, okay? You know, any place you can snorkel, it, you know, obviously, you know, I don't know what your free diving capabilities are, but, you know, we catch them from five feet to maybe 20 feet. And just check out any sort of structure, ledges, shallow wrecks, and you're gonna see them. Even bridges and stuff down south, uh, inshore, you can find them as well, all right? So let's get to the cooking. I've cooked these about four different ways, okay? The first year, uh, we I think we just boiled them. That's how we used to do it at home up in New York, right? You just throw the, the lobster in some boiling water and, and they, they jump out and then you throw them back in and then after like four or five minutes, they're cooked, okay? So the tails, you know, they're smaller, so they don't take too long. And we don't do a ton of tails, so I can't tell you exactly. Depends on the size, but you know, four or five minutes, okay? If you throw them in there, take them out, cut them up, put some melted butter on there and you are good to go very, very easy, okay? Another great way, on the barbecue. I got some B-roll here. Uh, and you can just cut them down the middle, open them up a little bit, throw them on the barbecue, put the butter on there, salt and pepper. Again, make sure you don't overcook them, of course, but you're gonna get a nice crunchy, uh, you know, corners and nicks and nice, nice texture like that on the barbecue, and it's absolutely delicious, okay? After that, like a couple years after, you know, you start, you know, we get a lot of lobster tails down here, you know, because you can catch them. That regular season is all the way till March. So you don't have to go August 6th or 7th. You can go, you know, almost any time. And after a month or so, you know, the lobsters start to move back in and such, all right? So you go out there, get some lobsters. We made some lobster bites, fried them up, put them in a the pan, 
totally delicious, nothing better than fried lobster bites. And you can also just broil them uh, in your oven, just like you would on the barbecue, but broiled underneath uh, on, a, you know, on a pan in the oven. So any way is great, and just one way is better than the next. That's a wrap, guys. We hope you enjoyed this lobstering video. We sure did. Be sure to leave us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and until my next adventure, follow, follow your dreams and keep, keep on catching. catching. I spilled my butter. <laughs> no. Good morning, Godzilla Nation. Good morning, guys. We're, we're doing Darcy's favorite thing, lobstering. Yes, I hardly got any sleep last night. Super excited. We're already out on the water. We didn't film earlier because it's pitch black. The sun just came out, but I'm excited. I am in my home waters where I've, my fishing adventures began. So we're almost to the spot, and it's time to get lobstering. Let's go. Let's go. We gotta go. <laughs> This is where I grew up. It's a very, real, like, it's just shocking to be here again without my family. But you know what? I'm gonna make them all proud right now. Jump in the water and get some lobsters. They already caught some next to us. Let's go. All right, guys. So we're lobstering, and uh, as the driver, if you don't have any specific spots, you gotta cover ground. And so we're dragging them behind the boat, just in neutral, behind some ropes, which is pretty common lobster technique and then when they see a lobster they drop off and they, and they catch it and bring it to the boat and then we keep going and that's how you cover some ground and look for structure and rocks and whatever else they're trying to do so just get started uh, waiting for that first lobster <laughs> Nice job, the sizzle. And then when the sizzle gets the uh, lobster in the boat, I just double, double check on measuring it. Uh, and you can see here with this little measuring device, you put it between the eyes, and as long as it's uh, this top portion of the shell is smaller than your gauge, then you're all set. I think I want to swim this area. Okay. And check it out. What? I want to swim this area and check it out. Okay. Alright y'all, y'all, I just got out of the water. I've been in the water a solid two hours looking for lobsters and so far we uh, we have three out of four. Three out of four. <laughs> I had to throw one back, which is not bad. Uh, and they're kind of sitting in the grass today, which is really weird. You usually find them in the structures. Look at that, there's a video. <laughs> so pretty cool um, and pretty neat to find them in the grass like that. And I think I have a little bit of my dad's luck on my side today, but Again, just really cool to be back here in the waters I grew up. This is where I was three years old. These exact waters right here. So pretty cool to come back here. Yearly tradition. And I'm just taking a little bit of a break. Jump back in the water. We got to get more bugs on the boat because we got three in here. Thank <laughs> you. 
We are wrapping up our day lobstering. It was awesome to get that get back down here again. Cause like I said, the last time we did this was like five or six years ago with my dad. And as you know, my dad has since passed, but he was definitely with us on the water today. We caught a total of eight keeper lobster. And as you saw me doing underwater, you know, simple, it's simple here catching our Florida spiny lobster since they don't have claws. And all you use is this fancy tickle stick. They don't like this metal touching their tail. So you just tap them out of holes and, and uh, basically they just walk forward. And then you take your net, but the key to success with this net is that you actually put it behind their tail. And then, then you lay it back down on top of them because they flip backwards. And that's pretty simple. That's, how, that's the gist of it. That's how you catch them. Some of them were laying in the grass and all I got to do was just scoop them up. But um, right now we got them in our live well and they're just chilling, hanging out. But would have been nice to get a limit, but you know what? At the same time, we got a decent, awesome dinner for all three of us. So no complaints here. Well, actually, Darcy got her limit and I can't see the damn things. And Fra I don't think Frank's over very many either. <laughs> When they're in the grass, I can't it. spot them. Darcy. Gang. <laughs> yeah, he's missing a lot, which was her family, the kids. Uh, yeah, she sees them like an eagle. I gotta see them in, uh, if they're under something where this should be. I see them, but. Uh... Yeah, and I was also using this awesome weight belt to uh, help me get me down in the water, especially when I'm trying to stay down there and I'm trying to actually capture a lobster. I start to float back up to the top. So with these little bit of weights on, I got five pounds of weight on it. It helps me stay on the bottom. Yeah. So. You all know I sink like a stone because I'm all muscle. <laughs> I just keep right, Frank? right back up. Of course, Pete. No, Frank's my man. <laughs> we are back at the house and it's another glorious day here in South Florida. We were whipped yesterday. We got up at 3 a.m. and we had over a 12 hour work day. But you know what? Well worth it for these delicious lobster. So we're gonna just dive right into this. I'm gonna be showing you two different methods on how to clean Florida spiny lobster, also known as Caribbean lobster, or even crawfish or crayfish, however the heck you wanna say it. I wanna show you really quick too, the difference between a male and a female lobster. And uh, right here in the tail section, what you eat, this is a female. This is how she carries her egg sacs. These little uh, clasper things hold the eggs right here in her tail. And of course, you're not allowed to keep females with bearing eggs. This is a male. A male doesn't have those cl little claspers. So that's the difference between the two. Pretty cool. We would always check that when we get home growing up to see how many girls and boy lobsters we caught. All right, so I'm gonna show you the two different methods, like I said, and one is gonna give us about 10% more yield on these. And of course you can use gloves. I'm gonna be hardcore today and not use gloves. But so the first one, which is a traditional way of cleaning a lobster, how most people do it down here in Florida, is you hold onto the carapace, hold onto the tail, and you just basically turn, pull, and twist at the same time to rip that open. I just gotta be careful with all these points. Just like so. And there you go. You got your delicious piece of lobster right there. Pretty simple. And you can see there's a little bit of meat in there, but if you got a lot of lobsters to do, that's no big deal. You just wanna bang it out and get done with it quickly. Last thing you gotta do with cleaning the lobster tail, and of course, Brian will prep it in the house for us, but you go through the anal opening right here, take a piece of the antenna, which I already have broken off, and the spines are reversed here. So what you wanna do is go through there. Well, actually the barbs are reversed. Give it a twist and then pull out the intestinal tract, the lobster poop tract, all that nasty stuff you don't wanna eat. And that's gonna go in our bucket here. And don't worry, of course, you can eat these knuckles here and eat the inside the head and all that great stuff. You can even eat the legs, you can cook those up. There's not a whole lot of meat and that's not the biggest lobster in the world. So we're not gonna do that today, but this is not going to waste. I'm gonna, this is gonna be the best stone crab trap bait ever in the world. So I am gonna keep these bad boys and use them in my stone crab traps in a couple days. Brian's shaking his head in a couple months. Brian doesn't like that idea. <laughs> Sorry about the helicopter. Okay, next step here, I'm gonna show you a different method. You can see we got a good amount of meat there, but there was still some meat in the head. So what we're gonna do here is I'm taking my fillet knife and there's a little tab between the last leg here. So what you wanna do is take your knife and I'm using my seven inch knife today. And you see how my knife just inserted right through there? Give it a good push and cut right through there. And you can do the same thing on the other side. Go right between the carapace and get it, your knife exposed to the back section. There's a little tab right there on the last leg that you wanna break, just like that. Now, hold your tail down and lift gently on the top of the carapace separate it just like so you see that you see all the internals and the guts and all that good stuff turn your lobster around 
And there's a membrane right here that's connecting the tail to the rest of the body. So you can rip this with your fingers or with your knife, whatever works for you. I'll just do it with my knife to show you where that membrane is. Right there. It's not a very, it's a very thin membrane. You do that. Hold on to your lobster tail and pull. Now we got about 10% more yield on that lobster tail. You see how much more meat is hanging out of there? Just pull out these internal guts. I'll show you the difference here in just a second. But you can see right here that we got a decent amount more meat off that, that lobster. You see on the top part, we got all that delicious head meat. And here it was wasted inside the carapace. So, and I'll show you again the difference of doing it like so. So pretty cool. Same exact simple steps, except you just gotta break it and take a little more time to separate the two pieces of the carapace and you can get that much more meat out of your lobster. So pretty cool. Actually just learned that recently and you can definitely see the difference. I mean, that's that's a difference, good difference of meat there. So just take your time with it and you'll you know, get as much as yield as possible out of that lobster. All right, so that is how you clean a Florida spiny lobster. And I'm gonna finish up the rest of these bad boys and then meet you in the house for the cooking with put-in portion of this video. And if you guys are interested in the knives I just used, I'm gonna link all that information down in the description below. You can save 15% on your purchase plus free shipping. Doesn't get much better than that. Great job cleaning those lobsters, Dar Sizzle. A lot of people have not seen how you do it the extra way that gets you extra 10%. So I think that was a really great tip for everybody. But welcome guys to another edition of cooking with pudding and of course today we are cooking lobster and i've actually done it two ways for you have you guys ever heard of fried lobster well i was thinking i never heard of it either so i decided to fry some so uh, i did a pretty standard fry first um i just took one lobster tail and i cut it in five pieces as you can see in a little bit of b-roll and i did the standard flour half and half and then into a mixture of crunchy panko and this great dano's seasoning that these Danos folks, they just called us up and said, hey, you want to try our seasoning? And I said, yes, okay. So we got a link for that down in the, down in the uh, description. Uh, if you want to try this Danos seasoning, everyone's using it. And then I fried them up, and I'm actually cooking some more right now. And I just made like little lobster bites. And I had some before, and they're really quite delicious. And, and the coating came out really good with the Danos. I like the Danos, so whatever. And then, we, of course, we also want to do some traditional ways. Now you can do all kinds of stuff with these. You can boil them. And we've done that before, and I'll put that video link right up here. This is about our fifth lobster video, I think, fourth or fifth. So Darcy's been doing this a long time, and so is the channel. And then I also we've also done it on the barbecue, and there's a link for that video too. But I decided to broil them because that was a very popular way. And I gotta take I gotta take these right off the oven. Okay, so to broil them, first you gotta prepare the lobsters. All right, so opening these shells is oh. Well, that's not the hardest part, but you stick your knife in there. It's a Smith's knife, of course. And use a little elbow grease, split the shell. Then you can split it. You can cook it just like that. Or you can pull it out, get your hands a little dirty, pull it out, get a little nicer presentation. Just like that, put it on the broiler. All right, now I'm just gonna put that in the broiler. I got the thing about 10 inches below or a foot below the broiler, got it on high. And there you go. Now over here, this is Darcy's favorite part, is he's doing this drawn butter. It's almost like it's like in a uh, double boiler. There's water here and this little thing. And then this is going to melt really nice. And then she's going to skim off the top. And that is called some sort of special butter. What's that called, Darcy? Clarified sizzle? butter. Clarified butter. That's the way to do butter. Ugh. All right. So I, got, <laughs> so I got those in the oven. And I cooked for about five minutes on broil. And then I put some butter on them and put them back in. And, just, and they're just about done now. But... I wanted to give a shout out, you know, we're trying to, I gotta open a mail. Okay? We get so much mail, I gotta open it. So today we got a bunch of stuff, nice sweatshirt and some other gear from fishingmagiciancharters.com up in Wisconsin. So I'm not sure this is gonna fit me, but uh, it's, it's gonna look cute no matter what. And some other shirts and a hat. Anyway, so these tails are ready. Took a look at these. Look at that. So look at close on that. That's some good stuff. Let's take over the table for a delicious lobster meal. All right, Dar Sizzle, does it taste like lovely, delicious lobster? Let's do it. I'll tell you the drawn butter makes a little bit of a difference. It definitely does. That's the only way to do it when you have <laughs> lobster. That's the only way we did it growing up. So you yeah. gotta follow uh, mm. my dad's ways of cooking these. Couldn't, couldn't think of anything better to watch it down with, down with than a 
Landshark. So guys, you know, just in keeping keeping with our principles here, trying to keep things simple for you and delicious. Broiling was pretty pretty good. I never really had lobster like that before. Oh really? It's very yummy. Very yeah. yummy. Got to dip it in the clarified butter and wash it down with the Landshark lager and the Danos. It's not bad. No, it's, pretty it's really good. good. What pretty did good. you think about the fried lobster, real quick? Yummy. Yeah, I mean, if you have a lot of lobster, try that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you know, you want to keep your lobster just a little butter and broiled or barbecued. That's yummy. It's got a nice crunch to it. I don't. I think it's doing a little bit of a disservice to a lobster. I don't know. Go ahead and comment down below what you think. But I think it's delicious. I think that was a good try to at least try that and have two different kinds. But we are spoiled rotten today. And just really just thinking about like how blessed we truly are to go out there and do this and catch our own fresh seafood. And I know a lot of you guys don't ever get to do this, so it's just it's just really special. So thank you guys for watching. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Seriously. Check out Darcy's uh, website for all the bracelets and yep. the 8x10s and the silver necklaces, necklaces and everything. I got spiny lobster necklaces. Awesome. There you go. Boop, boop. And uh, so until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Follow your dream. And, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. In this episode of Darcy's Offshore, my sister Megan and I go lobstering out of Boynton Beach, Florida. We show you how to catch Florida spiny lobster. We show you how to clean spiny lobster. And be sure to stay until the end because I'm going to show you how to cook these lobsters on the barbecue and they turn out delicious. <laughs> Suck it up. Suck it up. All right. What's up, Dark Sizzle Nation? Good morning. We are here out of Boynton Beach, Florida. We are salt in the salt water today. My sister Megan's in the water and <laughs> it's pretty cold for us Floridians. We're dropping in and we're looking for lobsters today. Going lobstering, snorkel gear on, and we are gonna see what happens. So let's get in the water though. And I gotta just suck up my pride. It's gonna be freezing. Here goes nothing. And away they go. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brian. Of course, that's Darcy. And we got Darcy's sister Meg, or Meg Han Solo, family that fishes together. And uh, we quit our jobs about two or three years ago now so that we could fish full time and follow our dreams. Hopefully inspire some of you guys to do that too. Today is actually 9-11 for us. So we're going to be announcing or reminding you guys of a Take a Veterans Fishing Contest. I'll tell you how to do that. I'll enter that real soon. But uh, let's hopefully these ladies can grab us some lobsters. First lobster of the day. <sighs> All right, so far one lobster. The girls are still catching some more. And just you guys up north, you know where I'm from in New York, we have the ones with the claws, the main lobsters. These are our Florida lobsters, no claws. Tails are still just as delicious and everything else though. I got one. Yeah. Nice, you measured them already? What? You measured them already? Yeah, he's keeper. There we go. Woohoo! I think I was over an hour of lobstering. That, that was a lot of fun and at the same time, it's a lot of work because we still don't have the best sunlight conditions for us to look to actually see these lobsters. But we're getting it done. We actually caught quite a few uh, small ones and then we were just out of the swing of things so we struggled to catch a few in the beginning there. But now we're catching some and I got water in my ear. But three keepers in the boat, time to take a little break and get back to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a great contribution, Megan. Do you have anything else to add about the wonderful uh, lobstering you're doing with your wonderful sister and me? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I definitely let a couple fly away. But <laughs> they're really fast out here, the baby ones especially. And with the current, it's been a little bit hard. But we're coming back strong. Lobster for dinner. No, no, no. Uh, no, don't. I don't want her to make her feel bad or anything. I lost a few too. But um, we started like tag teaming them together. Like one person tickle them out of the hole with a tickle stick, which is this stick, big long uh, metal thing that actually irritates them and they don't like it. So they come right out of their hole. And then the other person with a net. And in the beginning, Megan was like trying to get them from the front side. I'm like, get them from the tail side because they swim backwards. So a couple times there we had to learn our lesson on that. And we released, I would say we had like maybe like five yeah. to seven that we caught that we had to throw back. So, I mean, at least we're finding them. That's the, that's the key here, and we're just gonna keep working north and uh, take a little break. Let's have some land sharks. Okay. Oh, that sounds pretty awesome, girls. You know, this net the keys, and it's also like a month into the season, so a lot of the big ones are taken, and 
The whole place is picked apart, so. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm I think it's doing I'm pretty, pretty well. I'm happy that we got three keepers in the boat, believe it or not. That's like huge. Yeah, it's good. This is like the first time we actually officially did it in Palm Beach, too, so there's lobsters here. Yeah, that's true. It's our first time, at, you know, we're in Boynton Beach. It's, you know, it's not the lobster uh, high point of the, of, the, of the Florida or anything. And, uh, you know, these girls have been doing this their whole lives. And in fact, we have two other videos catching and cooking lobsters. I'll put them right here over my left shoulder, and you guys can check out those videos. and. They include all the how-tos and all that great stuff, and uh, it's, it's a great time for the whole family. You guys can come out here and do it, and uh, let's get some more girls. Hopefully, we'll rest up and get out there. Yeah, we got it. We got Dad requested two lobsters. Dad Sizzle wants two lobsters for himself to be brought home. So we got three. <laughs> we got to get one for each of us now. What a bunch of babies. You guys are such babies, I'm gonna have another sandwich and some land shark. Third dive, we've moved locations. We ran further north, mainly because the conditions deteriorated at the last spot, it was harder to see, and there was no sunlight. Over here, we've got the sun, it just came out, and I put a shirt on because it's a little chilly, but besides that, we gotta get the rest of our dinner. Let's get at least four more bugs, that's the goal. All right, let's do this. Okay. Let's on a lot more ground on that particular dive we just did. We finally had the sun come out, come out after waiting until like one o'clock in the afternoon. So that is awesome. We can actually see, but this area in particular that we're at is a nice uh, artificial, well, an a reef area that is well known. So they've been picked apart. I can see lobster like bodies down there that they've already cleaned, lobster antennas, and we got a couple that were short. So we are gonna make another move and find another spot. Due to the conditions in the water, we were unable to get good underwater footage for you guys. I apologize, but we had basically a ton of cloud cover and very low visibility in the water. But it's very easy to catch a lobster. All you really need is just the net and you need a tickle stick, which is this long metal thing. And you use the tickle stick to pull them out of the rock and then you use the net to scoop them up. And I already have how-to videos on how to go lobstering that you guys can check out. They'll be linked in this video in the corner so you can check that out as well. All right, Dar Sizzle Nation, it's time to go home and cook up these beautiful Florida spiny lobsters. We're going to show you how to clean them properly and how to cook them properly. And there's actually a really cool trick on how to do that, so I can't wait to show you guys. But they're going in the Grizzly 40 quart cooler. Can't complain about that. First time out of Palm Beach. We have done it in the past. We were very Success. successful. We got four. Would have liked a little more, but you can't complain about that. The ocean was great to us, and can't wait to go home and show you guys. And also, everything that you saw on the boat today, including the Grizzly Coolers, are linked in the Amazon store, located in the description below if you're interested. All right, we gotta close this up. Okay, let's head home to get dinner. Let's go. We are back at the house, guys. We are set up outside with our flats boat, our beautiful flats boat, and we are going to clean lobster. Yeah, we are. We got them nice and fresh in the Grizzly Cooler, and they're laying on top of the ice, so that way they don't get into the water or the gunk on the bottom. I think they're still alive. My fingers hurt so bad from all the little lobster cuts. We just took two out for now. Before we clean them, I want to show you how we measured the lobsters to make sure they were keeper lobsters before we brought them in into our boat. And what we have here is our tickle stick and attached to our tickle stick is our measuring device. And this is a standard lobstering measuring device. They also have very similar ones for crabs and good stuff like that. 
Basically, you marry the, measure their cara space. It's based on the cara space, and the cara space is the hard part of the shell right here. This is a tail portion, which, which is the tail portion we're going to eat. So it gets measured up to this cara space, and you put, you start it up like this, you put this indentation right between their eyes, between their horns, right on the hard part of their shell. Not on the eyeballs, this is the eyeballs, but their actual hard case of the shell. And once you have that lined up, you look down here, to the other indentation and you can see that his his actual cara space ends over here and if this lobster's cara space is shorter than this indentation you cannot keep this lobster in this case you can see he's well he's he's a about keeper. quarter past that uh that indentation so he's a keeper now i also want to show you how you determine a male from a female lobster and also the cool thing about our Florida spiny lobsters is the fact that they have no claws. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are used to the ones up north that have claws. Now, the one that Megan's holding is the actual female lobster. And the reason that we know she's a female is the fact that when these little flippers get opened, you can see there's little claspers on the inside. Show them the claspers. And that's where she would actually hold her eggs and protect them while she's basically while she has the eggs and she's breeding. The males do not have that. You can see on my lobster, he does not have those little claws on the inside of his flippers to hold eggs. So that's the difference. And we have three female, three female lobsters and one male lobster. Cleaning a lobster is very simple, very easy. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now with my Bubba Blade knife. This is the Whiffy, the six inch Whiffy. Really nice and short, which is going to get the job done for me today. Let me just move this lobster. So now what you do, the cara space is where it combines the meat that we're going to eat to the actual body and the innards of it. So we're gonna go in between the cara space. You can see there's an actual space right in there where the meat is coming out. So what you do is you take your knife and you kind of just like run it along the edge of their car space so you can separate that meat. Just like that. Just on the edge, you just want to like kind of get it loose. And then now what you do is give it a nice twist. Pull it out. Last step of the cleaning process is to now remove the intestinal tract. And that is this darker piece of meat you can see coming out of the meat and that runs all the way down to a hole down here which is kind of like the lobster butt I guess you would say so we're gonna show you how to do that very very easy what you do now you don't need any other tools except the lobster you caught I have a glove on because it's sharp but I'm gonna pop this part of the antenna off just like I did now sorry now I'm gonna kind of break off this thinner part so I have the hard part of the antenna here which is nice and pointy and sharp and it's got all these things here. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. But what you do is, once you have your antenna that we just made, we're going to stick it in the hole that is right between the end of the tail here. Oops, that came right out. Go all the way in. And kind of like give it a good twist. It also should start coming out the other side or it might come out your side kind of just depends on the lobster, but you can see it's actually coming out the other side of the hole, which is fine. And there we go. We just cleaned out that intestinal tract. This is ready to cook. All right, those girls take forever. Here's how boys do it. You take the thing and you just twist it. Usually with gloves, but this is fine too. There you go. Give me the thing. You break the thing off. And then you stick it in the butt. Where's the butt? This is so much faster. <laughs> but is it as precise? <laughs> well, the meat, a little extra meat. Is it down a mud in the butt? <laughs> You're crazy. Sorry, Come on. I'm not. Clean it out. Clean it out, please. Come what, on. What, is this the right spot? We could have had two. Megan and I could have had you two already. You could have had already. <laughs> Turn it out. Yeah, pull it out. And there you go. You're welcome. 20 minutes later. All right, guys, we've come to the cooking portion. And as you guys know, Puddin's always in charge of cooking. Red hair is kind of kind of starting to dim a little bit. I don't know, my red velvet hair. If you guys remember from that uh, challenge video we did, I'll put the link right up here if you guys want to see why the heck I have red hair, whatever. Anyway, I got the lobsters right here, and I'm gonna, we're going to barbecue them. You can also broil them, but uh, basically, you know, you saw them clean them, and we're just going to put them on the barbecue. And, you know, probably, I don't know, you got to test them, you know, it depends on how big your uh, tails are there, but like 10 or 15 minutes, how long do you think, Dad? 
five or six actually. Oh, maybe closer to five or six. So I'm gonna keep an eye on them. We got Pop Sizzle out here uh, hanging out in the back porch. And uh, there we go. And uh, we'll be right back. All right guys, so we had them on for a couple minutes, maybe like three or four minutes. And now we're gonna flip them. Now I just wanna mention now, you put them, the first, when you put them on, you put them down like that. Cause if you do it like this, they're gonna curl up in like a little ball. All right. So I like to put them like this. And then I'm going to uh, take them off. And you can do this before you put them on even or after. Dad kind of yelled at me, said I should have done it before, but I like to do it after actually. You're just going to use some shears like this. So you could use a knife, I guess, and cut the bottom. And then this will peel, like a little piece of it will peel like right off. And so you expose the meat there. Put that back on the grill. And you're going to put some butter in there now. So I got some butter we melted inside. And you put it right in there. You can even use one of these fancy things. I've already done the other ones here. You can just baste them with some butter. The more butter the better. Of course, if you start to get some flames popping up, you can just spray those with your water bottle. There we go. Now another couple minutes and we're going to check them out. Be right back. All right, these look done. You can also cut them on top and add more butter this way. But uh, I've been playing with them. And I'm pretty sure they're done. Let's go in and eat. It's time to eat our delicious lobster that we worked very hard for to catch. And I just want to say how rewarding it is when you go out there in your own waters, local waters, or wherever you go, and just actually be successful and catch yourself dinner. Fresh groceries doesn't get any better than that. Way better than purchasing it at the store. I gotta say, that's the life of an outdoors person. So I hope I inspire you guys to do the same. But lobster is lobster. We've had a lot growing up. Um, just we've lobstered every single year with dad. And as you know, dad is here in the video. So you guys get to see him. Dad say, Sizzle. Yes. Make sure you guys say hello to him and send him your well wishes and all that good stuff. But he's doing good and um, taking chemo pills and all that good stuff. So we are gonna enjoy our delicious seafood dinner. And I'm going to take my first bite. I also made these cute little uh, lemon cups with butter filled in them, and like the, it's actually like a cup. Like you can, it's a cup. I took the lemon out, the lemon out from inside, and I made a mixture of Fancy. drawn butter with a, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, with a quarter tablespoon of parsley, and one clove of mixed minced garlic. We love garlic here, so it's a really great concoction. I thought it would be better than just plain drawn butter. So here we go. We haven't eaten lobster in a couple years. Fresh <laughs> lobster, so freaking out. Mm, really good. Really, really good. It doesn't even get better than that. You guys will just have to do it yourself and taste it yourself. It's just delicious. Every bite is like super delightful and amazing. What do you think, Megan? Mmm. Megan hand solo. <laughs> So good, so buttery, just like I remembered. Buttery, <laughs> so buttery. <laughs> Back to the buttery word again. <laughs> this is the cockroach of the sea, literally. What do you think, Dad? Wait until he's done chewing. <laughs> I think I it care. pays to teach your kids well, because thank you, Darcy, Megan, and Brian, for the <laughs> lobster. <laughs> and I didn't have to lift a finger. There you so go. So I learned well. The but product awesome. of thank good you food. Guys. Yes, there you go. We really would have loved to take Dad on the boat with us, but it, um, it didn't work out this time. But Hopefully in the near future, you guys will see him on the boat again. But it was an awesome day, can't complain. We got dinner, delicious, and our first time doing it in Palm Beach. So I am very happy and even more happy eating this. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And until my next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on catching. catching. I spilled my butter. <laughs> no.